Hey, how you doing today? This is OXDF, and this video series is all about me learning Rust um, and working through the advent of code 2015. Um, if you haven't watched the first video in this series, um, I do an overview of Rust, go into things like cargo, how we create projects, um, the variables, functions, just the kind of basic stuff you'll need to follow along in this series and be up to speed. Um, if you're not familiar with Rust, that might be helpful. You probably want to go back and look at that before you watch this video and the future videos. Um, if you're good at Rust already, you don't, probably don't need to go watch that. In fact, you can give me tips and pointers in the comments about what I could be doing better to make my stuff even faster or better. Um, that's very much appreciated. So, um, like I said, we're going to do Advent of Code. This video is focused on day one from the 2015 challenge. So let's go ahead and take a look at the prompt. Um, if you're not familiar with Advent of Code, it always starts off with uh, basically, you have 25 days in December, December 1st through 25th. Uh, each day has a challenge to solve using some programming, and you get there's actually two challenges, two parts, and each part gives you a star, so you have to collect 50 stars. Um, so the first day puzzle really starts here. Uh, Santa's trying to get around an apartment building, and he can't find the floor. Um, we're going to start on the ground floor zero, so we'll make sure we note that. Um, an opening parentheses means go up a floor, and a closing parentheses means go down a floor. Um, the building is tall, so we'll never reach. So basically, we're never we're never going to hit the top floor or the find the bottom floor. We're just going to go until we we don't have to worry about those real, those kind of constraints. Um, and so the real question is, to what floor do my instructions take Santa? Um, now I, I think I already said I, I actually solved some bunch of these challenges a long years ago in Python. So it's just telling me my puzzle answer here was um, typically that would be you know here click here to get your puzzle input. Um, and so we're going to pretend. Um, but so my puzzle input will look like this. Yours will probably be slightly different, but it's still just going to be a mess of open and close parentheses. So um, we need to add all those up. Uh, let's jump over to VS Code. And so here we can, um, I talked in my previous video as well, a little bit about this Gen Day script I wrote. Um, and we're just going to source that and give it a one. And that's going to go ahead and create for us. You can see the day one is created up here. Um, We've gone ahead and fetched input.txt so we can see this. It's, so you can see here's, here's the input. Um, and then I've started a real base um, program here to start us working with. So it's going to read into the data variable the context of input.txt. So I've got my input now. And we can check that. You know, we can put um, data right here. And if we now cargo run, we get it, so it prints it out right. It prints it out in the terminal, so that's working well. Um, so what do we want to do? What we really want to do is count the number of open parentheses and closed parentheses in here. Um, so to start, we can do something. We can start real simple and do something like uh, oops, let up equals data dot matches. I'm not sure why I'm not getting autofills here. Um, but matches is what you work in Rust, so we can do like that. Um, and then we need to know the count of that. So um, we just said, hey, let's find the number of open parentheses in the data string and save it as up. And if we put up here and we run again, we see it counts 3,569 ups. Um, we could do something similar down here and do let down equals data dot matches. Uh, in this case, we'll do a close parentheses dot count. And we can put down down here. We run that. Um, now we could probably, in our head, say the answer is 138. Uh, we could do, obviously, we could do things like uh, this would be better. Let's replace that. Save that and run again. There's 138. Um, there's actually some more we can do here. Um, one thing, well, so for one, we don't actually need these variables. We could just grab this right here, put that here. Um, and do the same thing. One thing I wanted to think about just, again, this runs really fast. And so it's not, it's not time intensive. It's not process intensive. So this is good enough. We can move on. Um, but one thing, if you've got a really long string, um, going through and counting the number of each of, of a character in that string, you have to go through and look at every character in the string. And so effectively we're gonna have to do that twice here. Um, there is something that we don't, uh, we don't have to do counting and that is the length. So if we do like, total equals data dot, uh, dot len, that actually is stored, that's already stored in a different place. And so that's actually much quicker to pull up, I believe. 
So we could do something here where we did like total minus um, down. So if we did total minus down, that's actually the number of ups. If we Assuming that every character in the file is either up or down, then if we do total minus down, we get the number of ups. So if we do total minus down minus down, now we have up minus down, which is what we really want. Um, so effectively that's two times down, right? So we can do this. So we could do that and we still get 138. Um, and then we don't, we don't really need all these variables. We could just do, you know, we could put data that length here. We could put, uh, what down. Oops. What did it do? Let's try that again. We can grab down right here, put that in here, get rid of all this save and still have 138. So anyway, that's kind of dancing around different ways to solve it, but it, it is, you do want to think about these, um, think about like how to optimize your thing and make it faster. Cause as we get to later challenges in these puzzles, it is going to become something where doing inefficient solutions might break you. So, all right. So now given the same instructions, find the position of the first character that causes him to enter the basement floor minus one. So the first character in the instructions has position one, the second position two, and so on. So we're one indexed here. Um, and so if the first character was a down, we would just enter right away. Here, if we go up, down, up, down, down, we enter at position five. So that makes, that, that looks good. Um, so there's probably some kind of um, map reduce we could run over the array to figure this out, but I'm just gonna work with a for loop. So let's start by saying let um, mute floor equals zero. So we're going to start on floor zero. That's going to be our variable for tracking that. And then we'll say for C in um, data dot chars, looks like that. And now we need a match statement. So we'll do match on C and I believe it looks like, let's see if I can remember how to do this, like this. So we say for that case, we're going to do floor plus equals one comma, I mean, another case here. So we'll do floor minus equal one. And then well, we have to handle any other cases. It's not going to, um, let's try it. If we just try to compile this right now, um, does this compile? It does not. Um, let's see, what does it? Yeah. So, um, when we have this match here, it's saying the matched value is of type char ensure that all possible cases are being handled. Um, because otherwise Rust does not like you to have low, like it want it protects you from yourself, I guess. So we can add this one, which is um, the just straight underscore basically says catch anything else. And what do we want to do if there's anything else? Well, we're, we believe there's not, no other characters in data. So we want to basically do a panic, um, like throw an error, we're done. Uh, unexpected character uh, C, and we'll do like that. In fact, we can do something, I don't know if it's gonna go. Well, so we can do that. Uh, I believe that'll work. Let's try running again now. And that works. Um, we're getting some warnings here, but I think that's because we haven't finished what we're, we don't ever use, we don't ever actually use floor. Like we assigned to it, we don't ever actually use it. So um, let's see. In fact, if we put floor here, we type floor, right? It should be the same as, so the first one we did it by adding and subtracting, but this time we just did a loop and we kept track of it and we still got the same. So. Um, cool. So what we now want to do is we want to say, if floor is less than zero, uh, we're going to, oh, I was going to say, I, I got distracted. I also, let's see if we can make this, oh, I was going to say, can we make this like cool and like, well, let's print the character. What if we get a weird character we don't expect, right? So we might want to put something here and do like OX. See, I think we can do X like this. I'm spending enough time on this now that like, we're going to come back and make add some bad characters to it and make sure it breaks the way we want it to. Um, let's try that and see if that works. So I think what I'm trying to do here is say like, if we run into, like, what if we run into like some weird unprintable character or something that I don't see, I want to know what the hex value of that is here. So we'll do, oh, in fact, let's make it 02x. So now, now we print like the full byte there. Um, is that going to work? Assume it's going to run. Ooh, it does not like, it. okay. So we, that's not working. I wonder how we do that. Um, I think we need, let's, let's try, this is, we're going on a tangent here. Um, excuse me for a moment. Um, we can put, we can, so when we have these match statements, we can have a single statement following here, 
or we can put a we can do um, brackets and put as much as we want in there. So we could do something like um, let byte equals. I think we can just do c as u8. So we're basically casting c. We're taking this character and we're saying no, treat it as an integer. And now if we put c byte in here, I think this will work. Let's try it. Oh, but now we need. Not that we don't need, we no longer need that comma there. Now we need the actual semicolon and we probably need a comma there. Let's try that. Okay, it's working again. Let's, let's, let's break it and see if, see if we can. So if we put like a A in here from somewhere and we come back here and run this now. Sweet, unexpected, right here. Unexpected character A, OX61. So that, that worked, that's pretty cool. Okay, um, let's unbreak this so we can actually keep doing it. Right. So now if floor equals zero, what do we want to do? Let's grab this print right here. Now we know we found, we found where we are. Okay. Can we, um, there we go. Extra white space. Um, and what do we want to print? We don't want to print the floor because we know the floor is going to be minus one. We can verify that. We can, oh, <laughs> if we did not, we also, so when, once we print, we're definitely going to break. Because once we do it once, we want to stop. So we can break like that. Um, now we hit minus one. Okay, we don't want the floor. We want we don't know how far into data we are. So we need to come back up here and do um, dot enumerate. And now this is no longer C. It's now I comma C. So we're, so we're now going to get enumerate. Just takes says give me each variable and then give me the index in the in the string and give me the variable. So now the I will be how deep into data are we and C will be the character at that point. So now we just want to do I and now I is going to be zero based and we want one based. So we'll say I plus one. And we'll run that. And we get 1771, which I believe matches exactly what the answer is. Um, now again, if I hadn't done this before, we'd come paste 1771 in and it would say congratulations, you get a star. So cool. Um, day one in the books. Um, let me know if you know a better way to do something we did here. That'd be I'd love to hear about it, and uh, or put your code, you know, put your code in the comments or link to your GitHub or something, and uh, I'll certainly take a look. So, uh, thanks for watching this video, and uh, I will talk to you next time.